Welcome, to Dr. D. Y. Potal Institute, of Hotel Management, Pune. This presentation is done, by Professor Ajim Shek, for the course, Second Year BSc Hospitality Studies. Let us now see what is the menu. The menu means, a list of composed series of dishes for a meal. Or it is a list of the dishes that may be ordered in a restaurant or that are to be served at a banquet. Let us see the menu planning. The menu planning means to compose a series of dishes for a meal. There are few basic types of menu, those are as follows. A la carte menu, in this type of menu, one can choose from variety of dishes in each courses from card. Tabla dot menu, this is fixed menu with preset considerations. Carte du jour menu, this is the special menu of the day. For example festival menu, independence day menu. Now we will see, the functions of the menu. First, it is like a price list to the customers, in order that he purchases, or orders the dishes of his choice. Second, it helps as a tool for the kitchen in order to prepare, the mise en place and staff required for its production. Thirdly, it gives a variety to choose from options and alternatives in each type of dishes. Fourth, it gives the description of each dish in brief. And, the last one is, it is a record of cost and control purposes, to regulate portion size, and food cost of each item. Now we will see, the principles of menu planning. First, cold and warm dishes are listed separately. Second, appetizers, soups, seafood and main courses are listed in separate groups. This is nothing but a course-wise sequence of the dishes. Third one is, in every group, the lighter dishes are listed before the richer ones. Because, it gives scope to eat more courses or dishes, especially in case of a la carte menu. Fourth one is, salads should be highlighted in menu. Fifth one is, if offered, low calorie foods, this should be specially indicated, and the number of calories should be stated, so that to understand to the discriminating customers. Let us continue, with the principles of menu planning. Sixth one, if food is prepared with organically grown ingredients, this should be highlighted. Seventh one is, every dish should be described clearly and simply, in an appetizing way. Eighth principle is, how specialties and seasonal items should correspond to the season and should change accordingly. This means, menu should contain seasonal commodities. Ninth principle is, the dessert selection should be listed on a separate attractive card. This should be informed to the guests, that such a card is available. Last one is, the numbering of menu items in menu card can save time, and confusion, especially with many of the new computerized cash registers. We are going to learn the points to be considered while menu balancing. Repetition of ingredients, the basic ingredient on the menu, should never be repeated as it becomes monotonous. For example, tomato soup and macni gravy, both are tomato based and would give same taste. Repetition of color, this should be avoided to make the menu exiting, otherwise final products may look dull. Repetition of words, avoid the repetition of same word on the menu, as it seems the planner has a limited knowledge. Avoid overbalance of menu, if many courses are served, then care must be taken to ensure that they are neither too light nor too heavy. Let us continue with the menu balancing parameters. Texture of courses, offer foods with varied texture. Textures should be combination soft, mouth melting chewy, etc. This give distinct feel while eating. Seasoning, do not over season the food. Repetition of strong herbs should be avoided. For example, rosemary. Use of variety of herbs gives different aroma, and flavors to food. Garnishes, do not over garnish food. Garnish attractively and simply. Contrast colors gives, good appeal through garnish. 
food value, special attention should be paid to the different requirements of different group of people. For example, the manual worker requires more substantial food than an office worker. Meals served to children, old people, and expectant mothers should be nutritionally balanced. Next menu balancing parameters are color. A sensible use of colors in dishes will give them eye appeal. Deep vivid colors should be avoided. Colorful food attracts guests. Language and wording of menu, select language, which the customer can understand, if the menu is in French, give an English translation. Never use a mixture of languages for the courses of a menu. Spellings of the words and menu font should be correct. In this slide, we shall go through the factors influencing menu planning for regional and industrial menus. Type of establishment, menu planning for all types of establishments will not be the same. Principles of menu considerations for various sectors of quantity food production, applies here. First, menus planning for five-star hotels and restaurant, they have an elaborated menu, consisting of number of courses, and number of choices in each course, if serving a la carte menu. In case of table d'hote menu, there would be many varieties in each course, which are set as per the preference of the client. Second establishment is, the menus planning for school meals, school catering focus on nutritious meal because, consumers differs from age group 6 to 18 years. Preference on nutrition, and energy through the food is focused, with food varieties. Menu planning as per type of establishment continues as follows. Menus planning for industrial canteen, in industrial canteens, for manual workers there is requirement of wholesome meal or full meal, which keeps worker fulfilled for long time during work. Menus plan such a way that, it should offer energy to workers. There is inclusion of lentils, rice, breads, salads, vegetables gravies, sometimes non-veg gravies and desserts. Next is the menu planning for hospitals. Hospital menus are planned only as per the diet plans required for patients. Nutritional requirement of each patient is different, for example, pregnant lady's diet requirement is different than the lady who has delivered a baby, also nutritional requirement of heart patient and diabetic patient would be different. Dietitian plays vital role in planning meals in hospitals. Next factors affecting menu planning continues here. The type of customer or age group of consumers. This is generally referred as different age groups, sometimes community, also type of peoples attending the function. Menu would be different for the birthday parties of senior citizen and child's birthday party. For VIP formal function, menu would be planned, in order to execute the formal service easily, to avoid last moment embarrassment. Next is religious rules, religious rules must be considered. Lack of knowledge about religious food habits, may easily lead to innocently giving offense. It is very important to know that, the food which is forbidden by religion for one community, may be consumed by other community without any restriction by their religion. For example it is forbidden for Muslims to touch the pork, while other communities are allowed to consume the same. Next few factors influencing menu planning are, as follows. Meat or non-meat preferences, as the number of non-meat eaters steadily increasing, this becomes more important. Religious rule also applies in case of non-meat preferences. Time of the year, the prevailing temperature should be considered, as certain dishes suitable for cold weather may not be acceptable in mild summer, food in season are usually in good supply and more reasonable in price. This also refers to the festivals throughout year, for example, special dishes on certain days, like Christmas, Deepavali, etc. Time of the day, this is for the meal which we are planning the menu, whether breakfast, brunch, lunch, tea, high tea, dinner, supper, snacks, or special function. 
menu planning is also influenced by following factors. Price range, if price is not charged fairly, and if customer is not satisfied with value for money, the repeat business may not occur, and the caterer may go out of business. Number of courses, these will vary according to all prior considerations, if fixed menu is served as in banquets, as per price charged. Correct sequence of courses, this is very important, if the menu is to achieve a good balance. In case of limited courses served, one must consider that, menu should offer good variety even in limited choice. Appropriate languages, always use languages which can be understood. If writing in French, support each item with an English description. No repetition of wines, though this factor is rarely applicable for Indian regional food, if using wine in the cooking of more than one course, ensure that a different type of wine is used. Next few factors affecting menu planning are as follows. Sensible nutritional balance, if selections of dishes with varying nutritional contents are offered, then customers can make their own choices. They would choose the dishes which offers required nutrition for them. No repetition contents of commodities, never repeat basic ingredients, for example mushrooms, tomatoes, potatoes, rajma. If a basic ingredient is used in one course in one menu, it should not reappear as main ingredient, in any other course on the same menu. No repetition of flavors, if using strong seasoning like onion, garlic, or herbs such as thyme, sage, or bay leaf, do not repeat in more than one course. It will give same flavor even if, the test of the dishes are different. No repetition of colors, color of food is important to give appetite appeal, but avoid repetition of same even if test and flavors are different colors, for example sweet corn soup and cream of potato, both are different but color is same. Few more factors affecting menu planning are, as follows. Texture of courses, while planning menu, one must ensure variation is given in terms of textures and consistencies. For example, food should not be all soft, or all crisp. Various textures like crispy, mouth melting, chewy etc. gives good mouth feel. Sauces or gravies, when many dishes are served on one menu, the foundation ingredient of each sauce, or gravy should vary. For example, reduced stock, demi-glaze, cream, butter, yogurt, red gravy, brown gravy etc. Now, we will learn about costing. The cost of operating a catering unit, or department is usually analyzed, under the three headings of the elements of cost. First, food cost, second, labor cost, and third one is, the overhead cost. Let us see, what is the food cost, food cost is always calculated in terms of percentage. The food cost is nothing but, cost of preparation of food and beverage consumed, with respect to total sale, in terms of percentage. The percentage food cost is then calculated by the formula. Food production cost, divided by, total food sale, into 100. By using this formula, one can calculate exact food cost. Let us learn standardizing of recipes. A standard recipe is, a written schedule for producing a particular menu item. Standard recipe or standard recipe card consist following specifications. First one, name of the dish, the name of dish in recipe card must be, as same as in the guest menu, this avoids confusion. Next is, quantity of the item to be produced, this helps in pricing of the dish. Third specification is, the constituent ingredients with quantity, this helps in costing and portion control. Fourth one is, the method of preparation, this acts as guideline for new employees. Fifth specification is, cooking methods involved, this ensures final product as per standards, and helps in maintaining quality of food. Last one is, serving temperature of the dish, whether to serve hot, cold, or warm, etc. 
What are the advantages of standard recipe or standard recipe card? Let us go through the same. First advantage is, from standard recipe card, an accurate food and beverage costings can be determined, for particular dishes or drinks, and from this, the cost per portion may be calculated. Second one is, by itemizing the ingredients for a particular dish, the nutritional value of it is easily calculated. This information helps, in case of any health concerns of the guest, if applicable. Third advantage is, they are an aid to purchasing and internal requisitioning. It becomes easy, to order commodities as per recipes. Next advantage, standard recipes are particularly useful in kitchens, as a reminder to present staff, and also as an aid to training new staff. Fifth advantage is, standard recipes are, an aid to menu planning. Standard recipe card guides, in order to prepare or modify the menu. Last advantage is, they may be used as a basis for compiling standard portion sizes. As standard recipe card includes quantity of the each portion to be produced, with the exact quantity of ingredients, it becomes foundation for deciding standard portion sizes. Let's move towards the standard portion sizes. A standard portion is the quantity of a particular food item that will be served to the customer. The quantity may be measured in terms of grams, for example, 100 grams of painter, or a numerical quantity, for example, 1 roti per portion, etc. The portion sizes of the food items are determined by management in conjunction with the heads of both the kitchen and restaurant departments. Standard portion sizes in the operation may be established in following ways. First, by buying pre-portioned food items, for example, steaks, pre-wrapped packs of butter and accompaniments like pouches of ketchup, mayonnaise, etc. Next is, by buying food items in bulk, and portioning them in the production kitchen before service, for example, pre-plating salads, cut fruits, chicken, or meat portions, etc. Third one is, by portioning food items, as they are being served to the customer, for example, food in hot bain marys, in a cafeteria line being plated and served, when the customer requests the food. Le us learn, what is the standard yield? Standard yield, is simply the amount of product that you will have remaining after cooking, trimming, portioning, or cleaning. Standard yield is calculated in terms of percentage. The formula of percentage standard yield is as follows. Quantity of edible portion, divided by quantity as purchased into 100. The edible portion is, actual edible part of material after removing wastage or after processing. As purchased quantity is referred as, actual material received at the time of purchasing. We shall now understand, the standard yield with example. We shall take an example of chili. In the second image, we can see that the stem of chili, is the wastage, and lower part is the edible portion. However, the whole chili is considered as, as purchased commodity, or item. So, as per formula, standard yield is calculated as, edible part of chili, divided by, as purchased chili from market, into 100. This way, we can understand, how standard yield concept works. We will now understand, the standard purchase specifications. Standard purchase specification, is the concise description of quality, size, weight and, or count factor desired for particular item. Buying as per standard purchase specification, gives uniformity and consistency in purchasing and receiving. This maintains desired food cost, and results standard product. Standard purchase specification must contain following information. Name, or definition of each items. Unless, correct name of the item is mentioned, it's difficult to prepare the standard purchase specification. Grade, or brand name of each item. 
This is important to ensure desired quality of material, weight, and size or count of the commodity. Exact quantity per unit must be mentioned, also, count per unit should be mentioned, for example, fish fillet of 1 kg each, or 10 to 15 equal size fillets of fish, in 20 kg pack. Numbers per kg. For example, 10 to 12 even size potatoes in 1 kg weight. Color and texture of item. The quality of the item can be determined by color and texture. For example, red colored tomatoes with firm texture are considered as good quality. Unit against price. This is one of the most important information in standard purchase specification because it directly affects the food costing and profitability. This is the simple format of the standard purchase specification. In this format, all the required information is mentioned, which required while preparing standard purchase specification. In addition, the format also contains signature of the stores and purchase officer. This is because, if signed, the standard purchase specification mentioned in the format, is considered to be approved.